Well, I'm over here at my machine and I think my motor just died. Just checked. Everything is still connected. There's the foot pedal. All the wires are still connected. I press it and nothing. It sounded like there was something going wrong the last seam that I sewed and I think it died. I mean, this motor has been on here since the early 1980s, so it's about time. So I think what I'm gonna do is use one of my backup machines to finish this dress and then once that is done, I have my bag of spare cannibalized motors and pedals and things. See if I can get it running. If not, it looks like I might need to order a new motor. Hi there. Welcome back. And I'm not going to be sewing anything today. Today I am going to be working on replacing the motor for my vintage Meister sewing machine. So this is the one that I bought. Okay, just a standard motor, foot pedal combo off of eBay. They have lots of them available, lots of different sellers. And even though not very many people have a Meister, oops, sorry, not very many people have a Meister like mine, it is set up in a really generic vintage sewing machine way that I thought I'll go ahead and, and record this because it might be helpful. You know, I am not a sewing machine repair person. Um, I don't know all the ins and outs about it but I think that something like this it's kind of a common sense type of a thing so let me just go ahead tip the camera down and we will get started okay so first of all we're going to spend some time looking at the back side of my machine and the old motor this has been here since the like mid 1980s I think is just as the standard way there's a bracket that connects the motor. There's a belt which wraps around the wheel. And so the first thing to do is unplug your machine. Mine is already unplugged, so I'm not going to crawl under there and do that. And then I'm going to work on taking off the bolt that holds the bracket onto the machine. And that on my machine is just held on by a very big flat screw. So it should come off pretty easily. And the main thing here is uh, save your screws and parts so you don't lose anything. So I'm just gonna take this, go get a dish to put it in. Actually, there's a lid that my tripod is sitting on. I'm gonna set it up there so I, it's not gonna roll away. Now with this part free, my belt is able to manipulate and I can just pull it off of that wheel. Get it around there. So this is the old belt. It actually looks like it's still in good shape, but my new motor came with a new belt, so I'm gonna be using that. Then down here is the wiring. This is the part that might get a little more tricky. So again, make sure it is unplugged. Now the motor that I'm taking off is wired slightly differently than the one I'm gonna be putting on. And there's a hole right here. That's what I'm gonna be using for my new one. The old one, as I'm taking it off, I can see there's some black electrical tape or something like that right here. And because the hole, let's see if I can tip it down here, where it goes through this little part here, you cannot fit the plug through. So <clears throat> I can go ahead and just slice this little electrical tape part here open and I should be able to pull the wiring apart. Okay, so I have cut that little covering off, opening it up. And you can see that is where, when they did this last time, they soldered the wires together. Nice job, guys. I'm just gonna use my pliers that I keep up here and cut these wires. So that is off. That motor I'm not gonna be able to use again, and I can just pop this part down below. I have two separate wires. This one goes to my light which is fine, I'm not getting rid of it, but the one that goes to my motor, I'm pushing straight down. So I just wanted to show you, this is underneath my table here, and just like sewing machine cabinets, a lot of times they have like a little plug deal set up there that you plug the light, <coughs> excuse me, the light and the motor into. So I am just gonna make sure that I have this one, which I cut, that's the motor one, off. All right, so it came with a new foot pedal. I just placed it on the floor down here. And on the other side of the foot pedal, there is a plug. 
this plug is going to go into excuse me the new motor right here okay but it comes with a wide part here that is not going to fit either through a little hole that's here or a tiny hole that's here but it does kind of fit through this corner all right and what i have on my table here if you can't tell is the top of an old sewing machine cabinet that I have just literally plopped down and screwed down onto my larger sewing table with a hole cut out underneath it just to make it work because the smaller tables kind of annoy me. There's not enough room to really work on it. So that's what this is here. So having this come through like that, that is close enough that it's gonna fit on here. Now this came with a new mounting screw, all right? And it came with some springs and brushes. And right here, it came with some extra little brush screws. And that is what this is here. If you unscrew on your motor, there's a spring and brush set. Make sure I don't screw it up. I'm going to screw it back in really quick. But um, I like that this comes with extra springs and extra little screws and pieces and everything so that you can actually refurbish this motor if the brushes wear out. So that's a nice thing. This whole setup was about $35, I think. So what I need to do now is put my new band on my wheel. Hang on just one second. I need to make sure, see my old one? It only had teeth in the inside because that's where I need it for this machine. My new one has teeth on both sides, so don't need to worry about that. Work it around my bobbin winder so it's in place. So it's in a place where when I'm turning it, it's gonna turn my flywheel really easily. So that's good. Now I'm going to Make sure that when I put this on, the labeling is on top. This little screw for the brush is on top. The bracket over here is going to line up with where this screw was. And they gave me a brand new fancy screw, lock, lock washer, and flat washer. So I'm going to use these to put my motor on. Okay, so I had to use my old screw. That's why I save everything. Even though they gave me a new one, this is too big for this machine. So I use my old mounting screw here. This is still loose. While it's loose, I'm gonna pull my little belt over and put it onto this little motor pulley here. Okay, and push it down enough so it is somewhat tight, but I don't want a whole lot of tension on there and screw it on. Okay, I'm gonna uh, go underneath here and see this part can now plug straight in here. So I'm gonna plug that in. Go underneath my table, sorry about that. Go underneath my table, plug the motor in and we're gonna see if it works. Okay, this is my old foot pedal. You know, she's lovely and I'm gonna keep her because I might be able to use that again someday on my big non-skid pad. So I'll have to try to find one of those somewhere. But I wanted to show you, I ended up unscrewing this and taking it off from underneath my table because this is kind of hardwired into this foot pedal and there was no way around it. The way that this was set up is that um, well, it was just set up so that this is always with this, which is always, you know, then plugged into a motor. The newer motor that I got for this machine and one I got for a different machine earlier also have the combination plug where it's the one plug here has everything. So what I did instead is I, like I said, I unscrewed that from underneath here and I just have my two wires coming off. I know this is ugly, but I have my light plugged into one socket, my motor plugged into the other one, and my new foot pedal down here. You know, it, I think it's gonna work fine. It's not as fabulous vintage as my other one, 
but it's good, it's good. So let me go ahead and give it a shot. Okay, so here she is. The light comes on. I don't have any thread in here right now, but we can still test the motor. Let me press the foot pedal. And she's going. It looks like I've got it floored, and that's as fast as she wants to go, which honestly, it was not, it was a little faster on my older motor, but this is plenty. This is good enough for me, and that is fine. I wanted to point out, I just made a quick belt adjustment, just moved, loosened up the screw and moved my bracket just a bit, and now my speed is much better. So I think that we are good, so I just wanted to point that out. Okay, one more thing. I just wanted to show you. Remember I showed you that my new uh, motor came with extra parts. So we have enough here to redo this motor twice. I've got, well, I had two springs. I think I might have dropped one somewhere, but it comes with an extra spring. Okay. And these little square guys here and the little screw-on caps. And um, I don't know why they call them brushes. I am ignorant of that, but they call them brushes. And sometimes all you need to do, and they give you extra of these with the motor, or they should when you buy one, try to get one that you can, because this is my old motor. And I just wanted to show you, I decided to do an autopsy on it while I had it here. And so usually there's a cap and uh, I'm unscrewing it on my old motor here. And if I pull it out, there's a spring, you know, like they give you there. And actually this, this looks a little more heavy duty, but if you see on this one that I'm pulled out, you see how far down that part got worn down to. So that probably lost contact there. So anyway, there's a chance that I can still reuse this motor if I just change these out. Um, and I th think I'm just going to go ahead and use one of these that came with my, my new one. I think that I can make that work. Put it back in here. Put this motor back in my um, bag of spare parts so that I have it for a rainy day. But I just wanted to show you that's a way to fix your old motors. So I am happy. I have a machine functioning again and we will see it on the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye. Live in my bucolic life, we help me city strife. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sun and spin, and move the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red barge, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise This light it pleases me As it is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life